For a decade, I attend conventions for the thrills, the trends, the love for cosplay, and excitement of meeting new friends that share the same interests as I do. I consider indoor and outdoor events as well as vacation spots as conventions in of themselves, as I get involved in exploration, seeing the latest in collections, getting to know the community, and typing about my experiences, all while having fun doing it. These are my stories. I am Masashi X, and welcome to the Masashi X Chronicles Conumentary. Alamo City Comic Con is the flagship pop culture convention of San Antonio, Texas, established in 2013 and is considered to be the fastest growing convention in the US, with its first year drawing in about 34,000 visitors, which is very impressive for its first year. Over time, subsequent years would see the amount of attendees double up. Many factors of this increase include the location being held, the amount of great vendors that are doing business for the convention, as expected of San Antonio being a tourist town and all and what the convention is known for, having a huge list of guests for meet and greets, with many of the names they booked, you would normally see them on much high-ended Comic-Cons like San Diego, New York City, or at least Dallas. It was at Alamo City Comic-Con that I was able to meet so many guests, ranging from 2013, when I get to meet both Burt Ward and the late Adam West because of my love for the 60s Batman show, as well as meeting wrestling legend, the hitman Bret Hart. Then in 2014, I get to meet David Hayter, the voice of Snake from the Metal Gear series and also the screenplay writer for the second X-Men movie. I also met the late Vern Troyer from the Austin Powers series, Paul Eiding, the voice of Roy Campbell from the Metal Gear series, and one half of the creators of Ninja Turtles, Kevin Eastman. Heck, in the 2014 year, they even got the late Stan Lee as the guest for the convention. There's no doubt that Alamo City Comic Con is known for taking a huge gamble on bringing these celebrities in, and it was awesome for me to meet these celebrities as not only did I grow up watching them on TV and other media, but the opportunities of meeting them don't come very often. Alamo City Comic Con usually would be held in the Henry B. Gonzalez Center since its inception, but during 2018, they held the convention in a different location. In this case, the Alamo Dome, which is actually my very first visit of the place. Yes. I'm actually entering the Alamo Dome blind, figuratively speaking, of course. Judging by this clip here, at first, I thought the layout looked alright. I mean, the vendors are arranged in a manner that's normal in a convention, but as I go down to the floor, that's when I notice some problems. For one thing, the aisles are very narrow, and there's a high chance of limited walking space in the aisles, which is a stark contrast to how it was in the Gonzales Center. I noticed that there's not much vendors in the main area, which is highly unusual, and that's when I found out that there are more vendors and art dealers in the convention. It's all in a matter of searching for them. As it turns out, many of the panel rooms are on rooms further apart from the main room itself, and it doesn't help that the celebrities area and some sponsors are being sandwiched into the main room alone. With such limited space in the main room, other dealers would instead set up shop on other floors of the arena as the Alamo Dome spans about 5 stories. In my honest opinion, that's sad for me to see it like this because many of the attendees are more focused down on the main floor and these dealers aren't getting that much sales as they are forced to do business on floors that are only being noticed by few visitors. Another bad factor of the main floor is that with the increase of attendees, you can expect for the temperature of the area to feel very hot in a hurry. Even if I was prepared for that, there's just no escaping the incoming humidity. As with past years, the convention is taking another huge risk on booking celebrities for the weekend, especially bringing in Arnold Schwarzenegger himself, but the asking price for the meet and greet is too much for the average attendee, as the VIP package for meeting him is about 1300 bucks, which there's no way I'll pay that much. However, there are other guests that I was able to meet, as for the second time, I get to meet Kevin Conroy, the voice of Bruce Wayne since Batman the Animated Series and Justice League, 
Charles Martinet, the voice of a very familiar red plumber, Brett Iwan, the current voice of Mickey Mouse since 2009, and one of the most noble actors, Rick Moranis, who you may know him from Ghostbusters, Little Shop of Horrors, or the Honey I Shrunk the Kids trilogy, just to name a few. Yeah, I went out of my way to pay up so much cash to meet him, as this chance doesn't come very often. It's also interesting to see exhibits like some of these pop culture themed vehicles, statues like the Ninja Turtles, or Simon Belmont from Castlevania, which I'll admit I'm very impressed, or even more impressive is the statue of Hot Rod from Transformers G1, recreating the iconic scene of using the Matrix of Leadership to become Rodimus Prime. As for cosplay, there sure are many of them, very creative and it's only at this convention that I would see those that are rarely seen on other comic cons that I've been to. Overall, I find the 2018 year of Alamo City Comic Con to be decent at best. Perhaps the only complaint people have with the convention is the location itself, and I have to agree. Given how Alamo City Comic Con is one of the fastest growing conventions in the US, as the convention grows bigger, having it held at the Alamo Dome was not a good idea in the end. The Alamo Dome itself is meant for sporting events, not to have a convention take place, and because of the limited area space, many of the other dealers are forced into other floors and go mostly unnoticed, while the Henry B. Gonzalez Center was the better venue to hold a Comic Con of a higher magnitude. Not exactly what I had in mind in closing up 2018, but hopefully the convention will redeem themselves and have their event held in a location with more space to walk around and don't have dealers be scattered all over the place. I would like to thank you viewers for taking the time on watching this episode. I hope you like it and if you find my content to be interesting, feel free to subscribe to my channel as well as check out more on social media. Until then, this has been Musashi X, and I bid you all farewell, take care, and stay tuned.